the sheep eaters also made good use of the many high mountain lakes and streams. Louis and John Enos, they used to bring their clan on up into this area here. And this is the Brooks Lake area. And he used to bring his clan, his family up into this area. And they would spend the summers up into the fall picking roots and berries, uh, hunting elk and deer, catching fish. Let's start with the trap here, which Tom has made. And uh, it's, it's essentially just a, a chute that would be laid into a rock uh, dam so that you'd make a, a funnel shaped thing out of rock like a dam and then where the water went through the center of that dam where there was a hole where the water got through, you'd fix this into it there and then the fish will just shoot out onto that so that the fish are exposed and then you can pick them up and cast them out with your hand or you can stab them or you can get them out any way you can. And then I, I read in some of them that they actually made what they call fish drives, where the people would actually get in the stream and, and, and you know, drive the fish towards their, yes. their fish. Oh, there's no question that would have gone on with this, too. The kind of fishing that went on, at least from what I've read about what went on, is the sort of fishing that was really just kind of where you would obstruct the stream somewhere or another. For the most part, these things are are traps that are that are have to be man controlled. They have to have a person, you know, associated with them, someone there to right. take the fish out. You know, a lot of the information that I know about it comes from Dmitry Shimkin's notes and that it was collected in the 1930s from various people on the reservation. In fact, I think Dick Washakie told him a lot about fishing. Dick Washakie liked to fish a lot, and so he told him a lot about Shoshone fishing. Fishing, you know, you're going to everybody's going to kind of fish, but the spear now the design of the spear is based again on photographs. So what's going to happen is you're going to jab it through the fish and pull back. And when you pull back, jabbing it through the fish, this is going to pull off and it's going to be through the fish. And the fish is going to be on the opposite side of this so that it's going to pull back like this and catch the fish on the opposite side. And the nets were used more for getting minnows or smaller fish as many as they could scoop up and then dump them out and those fish they didn't uh, uh, clean them or anything they just pounded them and turned them into a flour and used them that way or they'd eat them instantly by throwing them into soups the other fish the fish that they took in here they would uh, clean them and uh, uh, cut the heads off and then uh, split them down the back and then cut the fillets out and hang the fillets up to dry Different bands of the Shoshonean people were often named for their primary food source. Other tribes call us snake eaters, but um, we didn't actually weren't eating snakes uh, because down below where, where one of our main camps is, is Denwoody Lakes, they have a fish in there, what we call lingfish. It's a freshwater cod, and they look like an eel. They have a, a green texture of a skin, and they, they have the appearance of a snake. The way that story was told to me was that we used to um, fish and we used to catch these fish and we were had them on racks and we were drying them. We had many fish and drying them and they were long fish like that. If, if you cut them in half, they were long strips. Another tribe came and was looking down upon us because of our area it was well known. We, we liked the area. So another tribe was looking down at us. They seen the fish hanging there. They interpreted it as snakes. So through that, they've been calling us snake eaters different uh, type of uh, um, Shoshone's and, and they just kind of uh, said they want they were sheep eaters and some of them as, as, as uh, Shoshone they say they claim that they eat snakes so to the sheep eaters it was number two if you're talking about the meat that they ate it was going to be sheep number one fish number two and then it's going to be marmots and rabbits and the occasional bison, the occasional elk and deer and et cetera that you're going to take. You know, it's not going to be half of your diet or something like that. So because you're going to eat way more roots and your diet's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 50% plant. Mm -hmm. 